Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, some mixed numbers today and some rates, which we'll talk about in just a second. But let's, the e we want to do things the easiest way possible, just the quickly, quickly as possible. So when you add mixed numbers, when we're talking about an, a whole, an integer plus a fraction, the easiest thing to do, of course, if they have the same denominator, just to add the two integers together, that's going to be 11. And then the two fractions will give you three fifths. All right. Now, if you don't have uh, the same denominators, you're going to have to figure out a common denominator. So let's do that in this one. So you pause it if you need to. Okay, well, let's find out the common denominator. Obviously, that is an 8. So we'll have 2 and 6 eighths plus 3 and, well, that stays the same, 1 eighth plus 7 and 4 eighths. Okay, let's get the 2 and the 3 and the 7 together as integers. That will give us 2 plus 3 is 5 plus 7 is 12. Give me the integer. Now let's get the 8ths together. 6 eighths plus 1 eighth is 7 eighths. 7 eighths plus 4 eighths is 11 eighths. Okay? Now 11 divided by 8, if we were to put that as a mixed number, that would just leave the 12 there. And we would go ahead and that's the same thing as adding 1 and 3 eighths. Right? Okay? So that would be 13 and three eighths. Okay. Now another way to do this if you want to, you can take this and go, okay, let me just delete this here. You can make this into an improper fraction, each one of these if you'd like to. So we have four times two is uh, eight plus three is 11 fourths plus, that's going to be 24, 25 eighths plus seven and one half will be 14 plus one, 15 halves. Okay. If you want to go ahead, we need to go ahead and get these all in as a common denominator. So that's going to be 8. We already know that. So 8 there times 11 times 2 would be 22 plus 25 plus uh, 2 times 4 is 8. And then 16 times 4 is 60. So we have 22 plus 25 is 47 plus 60 is 107 over 8. Okay. So let's look at 8 going into 107. 8 into 10 is 1. There is 2 left over. 8 into 27 is 3. There is going to be 3 left over. So that's 13 and 3 eighths, just what we said a second ago. Now, that's sometimes easier to do. Up to you, whichever one you think is easier. However, if you see something like this, I don't think I would sit there and go, oh, I'm going to find out 3 times 528 plus 1 and then make that a friend. And then you know, ugh, forget that. I would just get these two integers together, add those together, and keep them over there somewhere. Then I would take a third and add that to three-fourths. Of course, the common denominator would be 12. A third would be four-twelfths, and three-fourths would be nine-twelfths. So that would be thirteen-twelfths, or one and a twelfth. And whatever you got when you added these two numbers together, you add one to it, and then add a twelfth, and you got the answer. That's the way I'd do it. Okay. All right, let's look at rate. Uh, ratios are basically a comparison of two numbers. That's it. In other words, if somebody says to you, this is the ratio of guys to girls in a class. Well, that could mean there are seven guys and three girls in the class. It could also mean there are 70 guys and 30 girls in a class. It could mean there are 7,000 guys in a class and 3,000 girls in the class. In that case, ladies, run. Run as fast as you can. Anyway. Okay, so yeah, a ratio just means that's the lowest uh, uh, broken down, reduced uh, rate of or, or comparison of two numbers in a class or something like that. So we can look at things uh, two different ways, and this is interesting. If you say two apples cost 16 cents, we can go like this. We can say we got two apples, and then they cost 16 cents. Or you could say, we got 16 cents, we'll buy two apples. Either one of those is fine, right? That's what we get. The 16 cents gives us two apples. And if we have you know, two apples, we get that cost us 16 cents. It's the same thing. It's like almost like the other day when we were doing um, multiplying by a number that's a, you know, it's a fraction that equals one. It doesn't change anything. It's the same thing. Okay, now let's reduce this. That means one apple costs you eight cents, right, if we reduce this, okay? And if you had eight cents, okay, we'll call it like that. Almost like 
One apple is eight cents, so one cent would be like an eighth of an apple. Okay. All right, okay, let's take a look at a problem like this. Ralph bought six Chick-fil-A, registered trademark, sandwiches for $42. What was the rate in dollars per sandwich? Okay, well, we can do a rate there. Dollars and then sandwich, okay. Well, let's see, it was $42, and we got six sandwiches, right? So we can reduce that. 42 divided by six is seven. So $7 for one sandwich, right? Sandwiches per dollar? Well, we could kind of reverse it, couldn't we? We did six sandwiches for $42. Sandwiches per $1? We'd, we'd reduce that again. And we can almost go like this. For one sandwich, or for how much of a sandwich would you get for one dollar? You would get one seventh of a sandwich for a dollar. That's all. And that's what ratio, ratio and rates we're talking about today. Okay. Go to page 113. Give those a whirl and see what you do. Pause it and try A. Okay, I think the easiest way probably to do A is to just find a common denominator, which is 10, and add those two. So two and three make five. One fifth is the same thing as two tenths, plus one tenth is three tenths. Piece of cake, okay. This one, go ahead and pause it and try B. But if you don't know, I would, again, I would not, you know, I wouldn't do anything except for get these two numbers together and then do the fractions, so go ahead. Okay, if you do the numbers together, you get 784. Now, these two fractions, 2 fifths and 3 fourths, obviously the uh, common denominator is 20. So you get 8 twentieths plus 15 twentieths, that's 23 twentieths. This is the same thing as 1 and 3 twentieths. So we're going to add that one here to give us 785 and 3 twentieths. There we go. Okay. All right. Oops. Let's see. Is there another one? Let's pause it. Oh, yeah. C and D. Go ahead and pause it and try C. Okay, the, for C, Roger could travel 48 yards in six seconds. What was his rate in yards per second and what was his rate in seconds per yard? If he goes 48 yards in six seconds, he goes eight yards per second. That's his rate. And his rate in seconds per yard, that's only one eighth of a second it takes him to go one yard. Okay, so pause it and try D. All right, eight apples can be purchased for $2. So we have eight apples for $2. All right, rate of apples per dollar and rate of dollars per apple. Well, eight apples can be purchased for $2. Let me, re let me reduce that. That's four apples <clears throat> for $1. So per dollar, uh, you get four apples. And for an apple, per dollar, it's uh, dollars per apple, it's one fourth of a dollar per apple. So there you go. All right, that's rate and ratio. See you guys next time, have a great day and uh, do, do, do a good job of your math today. Get at least 25 right today. See ya.